Many people all over the world have a fascination with massive, powerful machines. That's why monster truck shows always sell out. The human body is incredibly strong, but there are some feats of lifting, digging, and transportation that are simply impossible to carry out with human hands. That's where monster machines step in. And the examples you're about to see in this video are some of the very best on the face of the planet. The bigger the tunnel you need to drill, the larger the machine you'll need to help you do it. When the Washington State Department wanted to dig 10,000 feet of tunnels to create the Alaskan Way Viaduct Replacement Tunnel in 2013, they needed the most impressive tunneling machine of all time. And that's why they built Bertha. Bertha was made in Osaka, Japan, and then shipped piece by piece to Seattle so she could be assembled and put to work. The enormous tunnel excavator had an incredible diameter of 58 feet, was over 325 feet long, and weighed more than 6,000 tons. Nothing could ever hope to stand in the way of this mighty, boring machine. It cost $80 million to get her built, and she came with unique features such as her own theme tune, which played for the benefit of the operators who sat inside her as she chewed her way through the rock. Sadly, no further use could be found of her after work on the tunnel was completed in 2017, so she's since been disassembled. All tunneling machines are powerful, and so we could use almost any of them in this video, and they would all be impressive. We promise that we're not going to do that, but here's another tunneling device that's well worthy of your attention. It's the Sandvik MT-720, an electrically powered road header. As it's powered by electricity, you could almost call it environmentally friendly, but we're not sure that the environment that it carves through would agree with that assessment. The MT-720 was explicitly designed to tackle hard and abrasive types of rock, the kind that less powerful machines simply cannot cope with. The combination of her transversal cutter head and her telescopic boom mean that she's as adaptable as she is powerful. No angle is too shallow or too sharp. She'll even keep herself and workers safe from the prospect of being smothered in rock dust while she cuts by, making use of her onboard spraying system. The MT-720 may not be as large as Bertha, but she was built with the intention of making excavation cleaner and more economical, and she excels at both of those tasks. If you want any evidence of the awesome power of the Le Tournau L2350, just check out the Guinness Book of World Records. You'll find it listed there under the category of World's Largest Earth Mover. Technically known as a wheel loader, the gigantic yellow machine is capable of carrying as much as 400 tons of regular-sized truck weight on its back at the same time. Just shifting that kind of weight is impressive, but Le Tournau can also haul trucks 20 feet into the air and use her boom to lift them 12 feet up and away from herself without any risk of losing her balance. The wheels of this wheel loader dwarf the average human. They have a 14-foot diameter, and they're 6 feet wide. Unlike some of the other machines we're going to show you, Le Tournau isn't a one-off. You could even order one to be delivered to you if you wanted, although you'd have to come up with the $1.5 million asking price first. Here's a trivia question for you. What's as tall as the Statue of Liberty in America? weighs as much as 9,000 cars, and is capable of moving three-quarters of a million cubic feet of Earth in a single day. If your answer was Bagger288, then congratulations! You're officially a monster machine expert. The gigantic bucket wheel excavator has been on site at the Garsfeiler open pit mine in Germany since 2001. But its story started a long time before that. Bagger 288 was built in 1978, and the reason it hasn't been replaced yet is that nobody has come up with a better way of doing what it was made to do. It was the single biggest bucket wheel excavator on the planet when it was built, and although it hasn't quite managed to hang on to that record, it's still classed as one of the world's largest land vehicles. To give you an idea of the kind of burden it's capable of bearing, it would take 10,000 dump trucks to shift as much earth as this one machine is capable of in a 24-hour period. The lifting capacity of the Liebherr LTM-1200 crane is so impressive that it's hard to put it into terms that are easily understood. We can tell you that it can lift 1,200 tons, but a figure that high is difficult to visualize. 
To give you an idea of the kind of mass we're talking about, 1,200 tons is roughly equivalent to 12 full-sized adult blue whales, all dangling from the end of the crane at the same time. The most impressive achievement of this crane to date was helping to build the world's biggest wind turbine. Each blade of that turbine weighs 364 tons, but the LTM 1200 was able to lift three of them at once, which made it look easy. The eight-part telescopic boom that's fitted to the machine measures 328 feet when fully extended, which makes it a world record holder. If we're talking vertical lift, its maximum reach is 630 feet. That's around as high as a 50-story building. Despite all of its awesome power, it's so well designed that it isn't any wider than a regular big rig. That means it can squeeze into tight spaces and do the jobs that most other large cranes aren't capable of. Bulldozers are pretty cool by default. That's why people like to stand around and watch demolition work being done. There's one machine that will always be cooler than a plain old regular bulldozer, though, and that's a super bulldozer. Made by Umberto Acco in Italy, the Super Bulldozer is a one-of-a-kind machine that was primarily made of caterpillar components, although the most crucial part of the machine, the bulldozer blade, was purpose-built. That blade alone is 9 feet tall and 23 feet wide. The ripper is a foot taller than that and has two enormous hydraulic rams to call upon for power. Tragically, for a machine this powerful, it's never been put to use. It was built during the 1980s for a Libyan client, but a trade embargo prevented the deal from being completed. It's now on display in the same Italian town it was built in, but it drove to its display location under its own power. That means it could theoretically still be used if anybody ever needed it. The people of Germany had a particular affinity for the F-60 overburden conveyor bridge from the moment it was built. They thought that if you looked at it from a distance, it had the appearance of the Eiffel Tower of Paris turned onto its side, as if it had fallen over. Looking at these images, we can see what they mean. The gargantuan contraption is a product of the 1980s and was built for the purposes of the Kletwitz Nord coal mine near Lichterfeld. During its years of operation, the 1,600-foot-long mobile bridge could move 90,000 cubic feet of earth in just 60 minutes. It was so good at its job that there's no longer any coal at the site to mine. So the original purpose of the F-60 has long since expired. That doesn't mean it's been abandoned, though. It's taken on a new life as a tourist attraction. Guided tours allow visitors to scale the steel colossus and enjoy the panorama from its viewing platform, which is 250 feet up in the air. In the evenings during summer months, it even has its own dedicated light show. A ship full of shipping containers is always a spectacle. We're always prone to wondering how the ships manage to navigate the waves without the enormous piles of containers falling off or going overboard. We also wonder how so many giant boxes could be arranged in such a tight formation to begin with. The answer is that a straddle carrier was used to load them. And if you want the best straddle carrier in the world, you'll want a Lieber straddle carrier. The flexible machines come in two different heights one for arranging piles three containers high, and a larger model that can pile them four high if you really want to show off. The larger model can even lift two containers at a time with superior stability and maneuvering, powered by individual hydraulic units at ground level. When you boil them down to their components, they're just four mighty axles mounted on eight wheels, but that doesn't take anything away from their impressive strength. To fully understand the power of the Jackson 6700 tamping machine, we must first understand what a tamping machine is and what it does. The purpose of a tamping machine is to pack ballast under railway tracks to make the tracks stronger and extend their working life. Prior to the invention of massive machines like this, it was a job that had to be done by hand and often resulted in fatalities. Various different types of tamping machines are available, but the Jackson 6700 is exceptionally well thought of because of its squeeze-type automatic clamper, which grips onto the rails and ensures even dispersal as it goes about its work. Some tamping machines can only work on either concrete or wooden tracks, but this Jackson machine can handle either kind with no problem or difference in performance. Next time you're on a train and you're enjoying a smooth, bump-free ride, say a little thank you to the Jackson 6700 Tamper. 
It was almost certainly the machine that did the hard work making the track durable and comfortable. The name Bukairus Eerie Dragline doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, and so it's no surprise that the people who operated the Titanic machine gave her an easier to remember nickname. For her entire working life, she was known only as Big Muskie. Ohio, in the United States of America, was her backyard, and her line of work was coal mining, where she specialized in dealing with overburden. Big Muskie is an old machine belonging to a forgotten era. It was 1969 when she hauled her first load out of the ground, the same year that the human race landed on the moon. Back then, she was the single most massive machine that had ever been built by human hands. At maximum capacity, she could rip debris away at the rate of 325 tons per bucket load. And when she was done working in one location, she could use her enormous hydraulic feet to walk to the next one. The sight of this 220-foot-tall 14,000-ton behemoth walking across the land was a remarkable spectacle in Ohio for more than 25 years, until the mine closed during the 1990s. Sadly, with no purpose left to serve, she's since been scrapped. In the bad old days, picking cotton was a job that had to be done by hand. But there's no need to live in the bad old days when you have access to a Case IH Module Express 625 Combine Harvester, which has the right to call itself the most powerful and efficient combine harvester ever created. Not only is it an enormous cotton-picking leviathan, but it's also the only combine harvester capable of pressing cotton into blocks during the harvesting process so it can be picked with a cotton gin. That means a reduction in cleaning time and lower equipment costs elsewhere. As if that weren't enough of a selling point, the Module Express 625 harvests on both sides of the machine simultaneously, thus allowing farmers the maximum possible yield from their crop. The cherry on the top is the hopper, which has the most capacity of any machine in its class and offers 5% greater efficiency than a linear drum. If you heard the phrase, gem of Egypt, you might think we were referring to an ancient treasure found in the tomb of some long-forgotten ancient Egyptian pharaoh. We're not, though. When we're talking about the gem of Egypt in this video, we literally mean Little Egypt's GEM, the giant excavating machine. The massive Bucharest Erie 1950B shovel was built in 1966 and spent most of its life excavating the coal field in Little Egypt Valley, close to Barnesville in Ohio, USA. From a technical point of view, the gem was a power shovel, and it carried out strip mining. Every time it took a bite out of the earth, that bite weighed in at 200 tons. The gem of Egypt was such a big deal at the time that when it went into operation in January 1967, more than 25,000 people turned up just to see it. Like Big Muskie, the gem of Egypt carried on working in Ohio until the coal vein ran out, at which point it retired in 1988. With no further work available, she was finally scrapped in 1991. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!